Hey photographers, today we will hear from another successful business owner who is reaching their financial goals by selling photography. Here's your host, Tavis Guild. Hello, hello, Tavis here, and I'm going to have a conversation today that is is I'm really looking forward to. Uh, we have Rachel Bohr in the house. She is a portrait photographer based in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, she's been uh, running her portrait business for about 12 years now, and along that, she is also an educator in our industry. So you guys are going to get some crazy value from her. She, um, you know, specializes in sales and marketing, among other things. She's also the owner of. Of IPS Mastermind, which if you don't already know, is an uh, educational community for photographers. Um, and she just loves supporting photographers and building their businesses through IPS. So welcome, Rachel. How are you, my friend? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. It's great to see you. And thanks for having me on. Yes, of course, of course. And so um, I already know we, we were kind of doing a little pre-show chat about uh, life and all the fun things that, you know, go in. But uh, we are going to talk about some things that are going to add some some value right away uh, for our listeners. And mm -hmm. one of those things I know I've experienced, uh, my wife and I, in our portrait business. And so tell me in your world... Let's talk about outsourcing. Let's talk about, okay. uh, you know, because when we hear the word outsourcing, um, <laughs> sometimes we're just like, no, it's mine. It's my baby. I can't give it to anyone. They'll never understand my baby. Yes. Um, and uh, but but I want to hear when, you know, that moment that you outsource, that moment, that thing you gave up. And, and more importantly, what I think the listeners would, would love to hear is, is the feeling that came, came along with that. And so, so lead oh. us into that. Lead us into this, this world of outsourcing. Yes. Oh, you already hit on one of my very favorite topics. And you already mentioned what I usually talk about, which is the fear that can come from outsourcing. There's so many photographers and probably business owners of all kinds who feel like they have to maintain control of every step of their business. And if they don't, something's going to go terribly wrong. And so we live this way where we feel like I have to be the one talking with my clients. I have to be the one photographing. I have to be the one doing all the editing. Certainly can't give up my editing. I have to be the one doing the sales and the retouching, and I have to do it all myself. Oh, and the marketing, right? And we soon realize that I think we're just trying to wear so many hats that we can't actually do all of these things very well because we're simply wearing too many hats. We're doing too many things. And I don't know if you, Tavis, have had this experience, but there, there comes a moment where you kind of hit this wall where you go, I just can't do it anymore. I can't grow anymore. I can't get away with this little sleep anymore. I'm getting too old and too tired to keep running myself ragged like this. I hit that point at like age, you know, 25. And <laughs> I just said, you know, I just kind of took stock of my life and realized that at, at this time that I'm thinking of, because you asked about a specific moment, this time where I decided to hire an assistant for my photography business, it was this moment where I was doing everything myself and I was doing it well enough to kind of limp along, but I realized I couldn't scale my business at all. I couldn't take on a single new client. I couldn't put out a single new marketing um, endeavor because I just was so strapped for time. And my family wasn't getting what they deserve from me. They weren't getting my best energy, my best time. When I was trying to spend time with my toddler, I would fall asleep on the floor playing with him. You know, this isn't the life that I envisioned when I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so that was kind of the moment that I realized, okay, I can keep going this way or I can get help. And then I'll really be able to grow and I'll be able to get my life back <laughs> and my mm -hmm. family life back. And so I hired my first assistant and it wasn't that far into my business when I had hit this point. I'd only been going for a few years before I realized I need help. And so I hired an assistant and at first I thought, I'll only have her do a few things. I'll just give her a few of the, of the key things that I hate doing. And you know, one thing I dislike is unpacking, unpackaging my prints and, and products mm. from, the, from the lab. You know, you're ripping off cardboard and you got the screwdriver out and you got all this stuff. <laughs> and then you have to figure out what to do with all of it. And that was always a step that kind of just, I, I kind of dreaded that step. So I gave that to her. I said, could you unpackage everything and then repackage it in my branded packaging? And just Tavis, just giving away that one little task, it, it was like, exactly what you said, that feeling of just this life-changing freedom. Like, wait a minute, I'm sitting here with my kids at the donut shop and somebody else is doing this task that I've been putting off. And yeah. 
wait a minute. If, if I can give her this one thing and it feels so life-giving, what else can I give her? And I started thinking, hmm, what else could she do, you know? So I started handing more and more of those tasks that I really dreaded and giving them to her to get them off my plate. And I realized that for me, when it comes to outsourcing, that's the secret. Give away the things that I've, I'm either no good at, and I can admit to myself I'm no good at them, or I just think, simply don't like them. And when I can release those things, it frees up this like emotional bandwidth for me and this yeah. energy to be able to throw myself into the things that I do love about my business and the things that I'm actually really good at. And over time, I think you realize someone else can do those things. It really is going to be okay. <laughs> someone yeah. else can take those little parts of your business. They can do just as good a job as you can. And in fact, it frees you up so much to be able to pursue the things that you love, which is a win-win for everybody in my book. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it because, um, because first we, and, and also we have to recognize that, you know, those of you out there listening or watching this, um, you may, you may be saying, well, I don't have, I don't even have enough clients to outsource anything. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, this isn't for me. No, it is because what happens is, is we find ourselves, uh, you know, as we grow, as we're equipping ourselves and, and doing the different things in our business that's, that's causing this growth, um, when we know that there's an option out there to, to outsource, which is where this conversation comes in, mm -hmm. it's, it's a sense of freedom and relief because, um, you know, sometimes, or sometimes, a lot of us, if we're honest with ourselves and we started photography, we wanted to be a photographer, not a business owner, right? right? And then we're like, well, wait a minute. No, we're going to be running a business too. This wasn't part of the deal. I just wanted to take cutesy photos and da 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 da. <laughs> and then people just give me money. Um, <laughs> and ultimately, yep. um, that's where the outsourcing comes in is, is, is continue to do what you love and the rest, give it to someone else that that's what they love. Yes. And you just create this so this beautiful environment, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to work. And I, I'd be, you know, I, I have to share quickly just our outsourcing moment uh, for my wife and I in our portrait studio. Uh, I, I remember, so we, we did, were doing lots of weddings. We were growing rapidly. We were still in college and we were in mm -hmm. our, our little, you know, 800 square foot apartment and, and um, just editing around the clock and just yeah. working, you know, making it happen. And uh, I remember my wife, you know, being in tears and sitting on our couch and she's just like I just I, this it just doesn't seem worth it it just it, you know whatever and at the time there there wasn't a lot of options for what we wanted to outsource it which was editing and mm -hmm. calling you know which if, if you're a wedding photographer out there you know that's that's some time consuming stuff but there was one company that that had just gotten going and and you know getting a lot of traction and so we jumped on with them and I can tell you like it was Christmas morning <laughs> it was, you know, to wake up and, and the normal like muscle memory were to, was to go to the office, you know, get your coffee, what? sit down in front of the computer and start. And it's like, well, wait a minute. No, that's out with the editor. I don't have, you know, I'm going to go, yeah. let's go on a walk. <laughs> you know, let's yes. do something else. Yes. Or let's go market and make some relationships exactly. and find that next great client. And that's where like the real power of outsourcing comes in. That's where it becomes a key to unlock this level of success that you probably didn't even know was possible for you <laughs> because mm -hmm. we're spending so much time in our businesses doing things that an hourly employee really can be doing. Uh, we are preventing ourselves from doing those higher level tasks that really can level up our business. And so I hear so many people say, well, I don't have time to market. I don't have time to go out and meet wedding vendors or to, you know, to make connections in the community or join the chamber of commerce or whatever the thing is that, you know, I'm recommending that they do. I don't have time. Well, but they do have the time. It's just that that time is being spent doing those lower level, you know, kind of administrative tasks. And those mm -hmm. are things that are really easy to let go once we can get over that fear. I think. Uh, absolutely. And I, and I think that that takes us to another great uh, topic to, to, to get into, which is, which is marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just talking about, you know, the, just the message and the, and the marketing stuff that, that actually converts. Because again, 
Um, as, as we're all listening and walking through this, this conversation together, um, yeah. we, we, may, we need to get some clients there so that we are actually staring down the barrel of, okay, now I need to outsource it. Like, it's almost like a rite of passage. When you get to the point that you get to outsource something, that means everything else is working, right? Yes. Um, and so let's talk about marketing. Let's, let's dig in, just, you know, uh, deep enough uh, just to, to give some people some great ideas, to give people encouragement. Um, because yeah. I think that a lot of energy should be put onto marketing in uh, as a business and also mm -hmm. as photographers and kind of creating uh, almost a marketing mind to where we mm -hmm. begin to see the world in terms of, of marketing, uh, you know, yeah. from that standpoint. So, so Rachel, um, what are some things or some ideas or some, some educational points uh, that you have uh, when it comes to marketing? Well, there's so many directions I could go with that. And I know I dropped a bomb. <laughs> I, I that <laughs> open ended question there. It, it is. But I, it, it, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's one thing I've been, well, I've studied marketing and I've, I've taught marketing for, for years now. And it's one thing I'm highly passionate about because marketing is the ticket to the whole thing. <laughs> Without marketing, you don't really have a business for very long. Uh, typically, word of mouth is not going to sustain you. Your beautiful images are not going to sustain you. And we all wish they would. We wish if I'm a good enough photographer and I put out beautiful work, people are just going to flock to me and hire me. And unfortunately, that's not the case. We still have to do that work of marketing our business actively. And I think that's the key word. A lot of folks are willing to market in a passive way. They've got their website up. They've got their contact form, they have their Facebook page, but a lot of that is kind of hoping people stumble upon us and then hoping that they like our pictures enough to hire us. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a real active sense about your marketing where you wake up and you say, all right, what am I doing today to market my business? All right, what is my game plan? Not just today, but the next month, the next three months, the next year. And you have to have that long-term vision for your marketing. You know, the other thing that I've really been interested in diving into is the messaging that we put out about ourselves and the way that we talk about our studios. Because I recently did an exercise. I, I took 20 random photographers' websites. I literally, I don't even remember what I Googled. I just typed in like portrait photography or something. And I just clicked on mm -hmm. 20 random websites, not the first 20 that came up, random ones from all different pages. I pulled them all up in tabs side by side and I started clicking through and just looking at all of them and just glancing at them as a group and seeing what are photographers doing? What are some trends that I can see right off the bat? And the number one thing that I see that I feel is a real weakness is photographers aren't using the power of words to market their work as strongly as they could. They really rely heavily on their images. So you open up 10 of these websites side by side and they all look nearly identical. We've got a logo, we've got a menu, and then we've got a slideshow with some pictures, right? And you scroll down, there might be one paragraph, and then it's a contact form and we're done. And there's not a lot of people who are talking to me as a consumer and using their language to make me want what they have. Mm -hmm. And sales and marketing is all about creating a desire in your prospects to own what it is that you're selling and really honing in on what their pain points are and their deepest desires, right? And then showing how what you sell can fulfill those desires. And to do all that, you have to use words. You mm -hmm. have to write copy that converts. And I think copywriting is something that photographers shy away from a little bit because it is hard. It is scary. A lot of us aren't great with words or we, we struggle with our language or maybe even English isn't your first language and you feel like, well, I'm not good at writing. And that's okay. But if that's you, I would recommend for the average photographer to make this a point of something that you're going to outsource early on. As soon as your budget allows, get some help from a professional copywriter and let's create some language on your site that's going to make you stand out. So when I look at 20 photographers back to back, I'm drawn to you because you speak to me in words that, that ignite some interest and emotion in me. Instead of saying, you know, Anne is a portrait photographer in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and she loves working with families. Well, that's true. And that's, that's important details about you, mm -hmm. but that doesn't it make me feel anything that doesn't make me as a consumer desire to have what it is that you're selling. So I think, I don't know where this, if the, where this train went here, Tavis, if this is what you're asking. <laughs> I, I love it. 
I think that using language and if leaning into getting help with your writing, if that's something that you are weak on or you struggle with, that is worth its weight in gold. If you can get some great copy that converts on your site, on your social media, on any printed material you put out, that's going to be just as important as those beautiful images. And I think people don't always realize that. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. And you know what? I, I think that let's get tactical here because uh, we're hearing these things and just when we talk about marketing, we, we all are, are sitting here listening and watching this saying, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, I should do, you know, all these <laughs> things. But but let's recap here. So the first thing you started with is is a marketing calendar, right? Having a plan. Mm -hmm. And so if if, you, if you're out there and you and you don't have a calendar, so I, I'm a big advocate of um, do a calendar that you would actually use. So if you're if you love the physical marking things off, print out every month and, and just tape it to a wall somewhere. It can be mm -hmm. in a closet, ideally somewhere that you see every day um, yep. and have your marketing. Right. So marketing is researching, understanding the marketing, have your promotions, have, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you're going to be doing for your business. Have, a, mm -hmm. have your posts there, right? This is mm -hmm. when this is going to post, you know, all those different things. And so that's a very tact tactical thing that I think that we overlook, which essentially comes back to um, a, a core of being a goal setter, right? So those are essentially goals in the format of a calendar. Mm -hmm. um, but what what is unique about goals and why it's important to set them is that they eventually begin to, to, to bore fruit, right? You eventually get to the, the point where, where you are receiving the harvest from all the goals that, that, that you're getting. Um, you know, I love, I love the big, just talking about goals real quick, I love the big goal that Elon Musk has of colonizing Mars. <laughs> but, you know, does he just wake up and say, now let's go colon, you know, like, no, yeah. he's got to figure out how to launch a rocket, land a rocket, you know, all these other things that we yeah. are living in a time we're seeing the stuff unfold before our eyes that's accomplishing one of his big goals right mm -hmm. and so with marketing it's no different if we want clients at the end of the tunnel it's not random it's not you know word of mouth you're absolutely right it creates a boom bust environment we're like oh everyone loves me right now and then where'd you all go <laughs> uh you know and uh, it's not consistent it's not something that you know um because at the end of the day like we want to go to sleep at night and not have that not that anxiety mm -hmm. weight mm -hmm. of oh, am I going to be able to do this again next month? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be able to do this again next year? Um, you know, because it it seems so unofficial, it seems so unplanned. Oh. Well, that's that's that part. And so so marketing calendar, one tactical thing. The other is, and I love it. Everyone, let's all do this together. Go and look at a string of of websites. And it's kind of a, a game of first impression of wh yeah. what are they what are they selling? What's in it for me? The big with them, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and so much of it, you know, sometimes we unintentionally um, we're just talking about yeah, I'm I'm from here. I've done it for this long. I have this many you know accomplishments and that all these different things. Yes. Um, where ultimately those are kind of the features, right? We want to be focused on the on the benefits, like what's in it for when that client comes through my experience. What are they really getting? Yeah. What is the actual product? Is it you know with weddings, you you and I know just doing weddings for years that it's peace of mind, knowing they have someone there that's going to take care of them and have plan A, B, C, D, E all the way through. Um, our product, they're investing in peace of mind. And they just so happen to get beautiful portraits, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, from from that standpoint. So I, I love I love this conversation. Um, you know, I I think it's really neat how um, you know because again, marketing as as a as a, just a hey, let's talk about marketing is is pretty broad. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, having a calendar, having like what is our message, but then also you said something really special, which is and very specific about copy, about mm -hmm. words have meaning. Right. Uh, there's a book out there about that, too, if you want to read it. Um, but uh, but no, words are, are so important. And mm -hmm. we as photographers see the world visually first, right. oftentimes as an artist. Right. Mm -hmm. And we forget that words are also painting a picture and painting an mm -hmm. idea or affirming, you know, an idea. And and so I like to do because you mentioned it again. Let's get tactical here yeah. um, is that uh, I call it a little marketing bucket, a little marketing money bucket. 
And so for every sale that we have, we're going to put a little bit of that in this bucket. We're going to get like kind of a, a war fund for marketing. Yes. And it, it may be like you, you said, to, to hire someone to help with copy, to mm -hmm. hire, you know, maybe it's someone to actually run your Facebook marketing campaigns mm -hmm. or whatever platform you're on, right? Sure. Um, you know, all these things. But we don't just randomly go indebted at some random time and say, okay, now I'm going to you know, lean out there. It's like, no, get this little war bucket going. Every, just mm -hmm. pick a percentage of every sale that you have and just put it in this little stash that you don't yeah. touch. Because yeah. the cool thing is, is that once you get that stash to a certain amount and you start applying it, it's mm -hmm. self-funding because, right. because it's having impact. And then it just keeps filling up and filling up and filling up. And then you're spending yeah. more and more. And then that is where a stable photography company comes in. I think that's a great point. And I think having kind of a, a fund or a budget that you've set aside, nobody likes the word budget, but you know, <laughs> having a budget set aside for marketing helps you to think about marketing differently. If I ask you like, what are you gonna do to market your business? That's this very nebulous idea. You don't know, and I don't know, and what are we doing? And there's no plan and no strategy. But if I say, okay, based on what you've set aside, you have $500 this month, to go towards marketing. It helps you then think more concretely. You're like, okay, that's a set amount of money. What can I do with that? Can I participate in this show? Can I, you know, create this uh, campaign on social media? What can I do with that money? So I just think it helps us to be a little bit more strategic with our marketing when we have that money set aside, earmarked just for marketing, and then there's a certain dollar amount we're discussing rather than, you know, this general idea that we should be spending on marketing and we just don't know where and how to put that money. Right. Yeah, it's kind of a proactive work versus reactive. Uh, yeah. We we react to success, um, and and just you guys all know we react to success during those seasons. So for those of you that have four seasons, it's fall or spring, right? And we it's like oh wow, and then we get to summer or we get to January, February. And we're like ooh. Winter has come, yeah. and what am I gonna do? And we start like, let's do a uh, look around the room, mini sessions, you know, or something. Yeah. And you're just grappling, at, you know, all these different things. And um, and so that is being reactive versus you know having a set you know calendar with a budget and having that just churn out, you know, to where basically. Um, you know, you, you're essentially turning people away in some instances. You're, you're booked. You're all filled up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from that standpoint. So I, I love it. I love it. Very good. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about the last thing um, that I thought would be fun to talk about just because um, I love your community over at IPS uh, Masterminds and, and just foundationally. Um, it is solid in the sense that you, you guys are just building – photographers up constantly mm -hmm. and you have these photographers come in and so IPS in-person sales right and um, and and they're just like what is what does that translate into yeah. what does that mean to me how will that impact my life um, mm -hmm. and so let's let's unpack just just a little piece of talking about um, in-person sales because there are some uh, things that that um, what are what are what would we call it? Maybe some limiting beliefs that we put in mm. in front of ourselves, or maybe some some uh, vocabulary or some script that we're telling ourselves, like, oh, we don't want to sound a certain way, we don't want to be that way. That's not authentic to me, or something like that. Yes. So, Rachel, how? Because I know you've had this conversation a thousand times. What can you speak into to that photographer that that is maybe making that transition, or maybe has some of those things? How can we identify that, and, and where do we go from there? Yeah, I think it kind of relates to both of the discussions we've had already in a way. It relates to this idea of, you know, outsourcing. We were talking about when you reach that point in your life where you just feel overwhelmed and, and, and you just you can't handle one more detail, right? I think we have to come to our client interactions with a recognition that our clients often feel this way as well. They're busy, they're stressed, they've got kids on the run, they've got a job to think about, and they've got so much going on. And when it comes to having portraits made, they know they want to have the portraits made, but they haven't thought beyond that yet because they just don't know what they're going to do with them. They're overwhelmed. And if you leave clients with a, a pile of digital images, I always say it's kind of like a chef coming out to your table with a basket full of ingredients and saying, here's your dinner. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yes, this is technically everything that I need for dinner, but you didn't finish it for me. You didn't cook it. You didn't do the work to get it to the place where I can enjoy it. So that's what I feel like we're doing with in-person sales is 
we're sitting down with our clients and it's not about selling to them. If that word selling makes you uncomfortable at this point, that's all right, don't say that word. Think about the service that you're providing to your clients and think about how you're helping them go from that place of overwhelm and confusion to, hey, listen, you don't have to do a thing. Sit back and relax, you know, I've got, I've got this. I'm gonna help you come home with, or I'm gonna help you, you know, uh, and I'll even deliver to your house and even install for you so you don't have to worry about it. These beautiful printed products so you can enjoy these images that we created together. And you don't have to worry about um, doing this yourself, having the time to DIY this project. You don't have time and I get that. And so I'm here for you. I'm here to, to take these images to that last step. So when I talk about IPS, that's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing that um, amazing relationship that we have with our clients and the service that we provide to take something off their plate. I'm not thinking about pushing something on them that they don't wanna buy. That's never, never the point, never the goal, and that will backfire on you in the long run. So I'm talking about how do I help them get what they really want and how do I do that in a way that makes their life easier and then that ties in to the marketing messaging Tavis because yes. that's what I want to tell people mm -hmm. I'm the photographer for you because I'm going to do all the work for you and make your life easier so you can check that off of your to-do list and know that I've got it handled for you yeah so it all kind of ties together and that's what I teach over at IPS mastermind is I give photographers the tools to provide that service to their clients in a way that does feel authentic. It feels natural, it feels easy, and it doesn't feel like something salesy or something uncomfortable that you don't wanna be associated with. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's so funny. We unintentionally completed the circle there because mm -hmm. someone may have said, well, what do I say on the website? What do I, what do I put yeah. there? It's just like, well, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> and I love it because, um, you know, some people are different parts of their journey. And in fact, this is something that rears up every way is that a feeling, that feeling of, you know, I'm not good enough or I can't relate because I'm not in that season of life. Mm -hmm. And yet serving someone that's in a different season, right? And saying, okay, I have to almost, um, you know, uh, be a chameleon in a sense of just saying, hey, I need to imagine myself in their world versus mm. having everyone visit my world. Mm. Uh, because, um, I, you know, and, and you said it, uh, you know, I just love a, a, as a kid, um, you know, going through, you know, different church events and stuff, you know, we have this like love to serve, right? Live yeah. to serve. And, uh, and, and we just want to serve. And a part of that service, a good service is, is delivering on something that the other person wants. And right. so if you were to just like draw a quick roadmap right now, you're basically looking at, you know, I offer, you know, portraits. Here's my experience, you know, the mm -hmm. fun and all that stuff that's going through, right? Um, all the way to, at some point, we want our clients or our future client to enjoy this on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we all know better that anything that ends up on our phone is only there as long as until yeah. we get a new phone um, or something, right? And I mean, okay, so if we were to see hands raised right now, how yeah. many of us have been on vacation and all of a sudden we're just like, you know, oh my goodness, I'm going to take pictures of all these beautiful things to the tune of hundreds and in some cases, thousands of photos of this vacation. Now, let's be honest. Let's say that happened five years ago. When's the last time you went back and looked at that? No, you never. didn't. You never did. Maybe, maybe there was that moment of nostalgia, and you and you took you know three minutes, and it and it probably took you fifteen minutes to just find where they were. To find it. But right. uh, but ultimately, that that's what our clients are also living in. That's the world they're living in, where they have these special moments, and they're archived, right? Mm -hmm. But they just stay in the archive, and they're not on display, and they don't understand, you know, the impact they'll have in their lives from there. So, so I love that, um, you know, in-person sales, you know, really as as kind of the cornerstone of of delivering on uh, something tangible, something as that reminder of a season is is so cool. So yeah, so. Yeah, and it's life changing for the photographer too, because you typically see, you know, a huge boost in your sales figures. A lot of the students who come through my program revive, they're seeing, you know, three times, four times higher sales averages as soon as they switch to in-person sales. And that's without changing their pricing or anything else. And so it's just a model that is better for clients. I think it's great for photographers. It's not the only way to be in business, but it's a great way. It's very, very highly um, fulfilling for me as a photographer. And so it's something I love to share with others. Yeah. And if you've never uh, printed your work out there or never printed your work in a substantial size, 
there's something about it is I've seen a lot of photographers come to tears. Like there's something really special when we're intentional about getting our stuff. In fact, I have a new piece here in our gallery and I, I, I actually intentionally take a different route to my office so Aww. I can walk by this new, cause I'm so, I love it so much. It's like yeah. just eye candy for me. And I'm like, Oh, I love what was going on anyway. So, uh, so I think that we, as photographers, that's cup filling stuff. That's that encouragement yeah. and, and all those things. And, and so anyways, Rachel, um, Man, this has been so fun. I think we've covered a lot in a short amount of time, which is wonderful. And so, yeah. Rachel, where can um, where can we find you? Where's the easiest place? How can we get plugged into your world? Yeah, probably the easiest way is just to go to ipsmastermind.com, and that's where you're going to find all the things we have going on. I've got that Revive membership that I talked about, which is kind of the, the place where I lean the most into just connecting with the members in there and doing coaching calls with them, offering videos and worksheets and templates and scripts and everything they need like as far as tools mm -hmm. to really achieve their business goals. And then we've got lots of other great stuff on the site for you, some free resources and lots of things you can take advantage of so ipsmastermind.com i love it and you guys um I, I tell you what you are in good hands with rachel and her team uh by going over there so if if any of that resonated with you i already know there is there's a lot of content over there to you know uh, that is organized in a way to just really put one foot in front of the other um and so anyways rachel thank you so much um thank for, you, for hanging out with us and uh we'll talk again soon this was so fun thank you again for having me Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Selling Photography with Tavis Guild, sponsored by Guild Canvas Company, a luxury line of museum-quality canvases for photographers, hand-painted and easy to clean. Go to guildcanvas.com and click Become a Client to get started.